Isn't that so beautiful? Do you like it? I like it. So guys, I am planning to make a, a new video for you about how I got a house in Philadelphia. I just paid for that like nothing, zero. Actually, I got uh, 1400 back on my in cash, in a check uh, on my closing day. So I will, but it takes time and I need to uh, rem remember all my paperwork and everything. So, but today, today we are here in Armenian church. Armenian church is Christian church. It's kind of like Russian Orthodox church, but different. It's not Russian Orthodox church. It's kind of Orthodox church, but different. And my friends, Armenian friends, and it's one more accent in your savings. I don't know how to say it in English. <laughs> Yeah, but this video in English, so say hello in English. <laughs> okay, who is this? Who is this? So she, she's so shy, she doesn't speak English yet. But her daughter, her daughter is, so we, we are waiting for her daughter and she will tell us more, yeah? Adversary 
in our faith and it is a source of strength and hope. And I would like to share this story with you. This happened during the Armenian Genocide. There was a small village in the northern part of Turkey, current Turkey. And during genocide, unfortunately, they killed all the men and they left only women, children, and elderly people. And then one day, Ottoman Turks, they decided to come back and kill the rest of the people. And these people, they saw from distance that soldiers are coming, they saw they are bold. And then they informed their priest. This priest was a elderly person and he gathered all the people in this village and he said, let us pray and ask God to help us to protect us. And he did Amrastan, blessing of the four corners of the world. And when he went to the northern part of the village, and he put his cross into the water, into the sea. At that moment, it says that a big windstorm started. And his Turkish boat sank, they died, and in this way, our people survived in this small village. This is only one miracle. I am sure that you all have your stories about the Holy Cross how the cross protected you. So they do have a, like a Sunday school, Sunday church school here in the building where you can bring your kids to learn Armenian language and also learn more about Armenian culture and Armenian church. And by the way, I think the Armenian diaspora is one of the biggest diasporas in United States too. Not the biggest, but I mean from post Soviet Union countries. And they have a lot of Armenians live in in California. I don't know why they chose Los Angeles area and so you can see a lot of Armenians living in LA. for small kids it's very nice i like this so i hope you can tell me more in english because your mama was so shy she couldn't tell me anything she said oh no i don't speak english i'm so shy maybe you can tell something for my english speaking youtube channel can you share the story about armenian diaspora in the united states armenian church about your experience of immigration what, what, what's going on what, what, what happened you don't feel comfortable to talk now? No. Ah. <laughs> Our ladies in the kitchen, uh, Silva, Sonic, and Yves Binanna, for working very hard for us. And they pick the tomatoes from our church garden, from outside. Same day with Emily, with our dear Emily, and they have our dear Javier. Armen is a deacon, he graduated St. Nurses Seminary and then he came here to the internship and then he got married with Emily and his four years he's with us. But now he is going to go to Armenia uh, for study, uh, I think three months, yes? Yeah, is come, okay, two months. And then he's going to come back to US and God willing, he's going to be ordained as a priest and be assigned in the parish, yes, somewhere in the US. Amen, good luck, thank you for all your help these years. So we are looking forward for that day when you come back and be ordained. And then we will become here at school. Oh, I was invited in the sanctuary, the office of priest. Looks nice. Oh, yeah. Take a look at all of these beauty icons and pictures. By the way, maybe you heard about American, uh, uh, American Armenians. The most famous, most famous American Armenian, you know her. It's a Cher, the singer, the artist Cher. She's Armenian, by the way, if you didn't know. <laughs>
I never saw the picture like that. What that represents or what the symbol about? Yes. Uh, here we see Jesus Christ, uh -huh. and here we see this egg, which represents the Earth, the planet. We know that Jesus Christ came uh, to pay the penalty of our sins. He shed his blood for us, so we can be saved. Okay. Yes, my what? name is Father Jacob Geborkian. I am the pastor of Holy Trinity Armenian Church, and I am fr uh, originally from Armenia, uh, from Forbida. Uh, here we have four villa in front of Mount Ararat. Oh, you beautiful! See, yeah, from that village. And I have been serving in this church for uh, almost 15 years. It's a great community. Uh, I love our people, and they are always uh, helpful and they are very involved in the church life. Yeah, I see a lot of people here. Is, do you have so many people every Sunday or just today for a special occasion? Not summertime, but after summer, yes. Oh, we, because our church is very active. I don't want to complain, but when I visited this Russian Orthodox Church, there weren't so much people, you know, and here I see a lot of people. Yes. Okay. And you've been a ch uh, priest all your life, or you was doing something different? No, I went after... Uh, graduating school, uh, I went to seminary for... Oh, pretty all your life? Yes, I went to seminary for almost seven years and then another seven years I served in Mother Siopoli Echmiadzin and then I was ordained as a priest and uh, I came to the United States. Oh, cool. Yes. Can you tell more about Armenian church? I heard this, this is the oldest Armenian, no, how to say that, it's like the oldest Christian church in the world who was like accepted as a state religion uh, correct yes we armenians became christian in 301 officially but of course before that we were christian but officially in 301 uh, our king Tartat, uh, with saint gregory the illuminator they uh, proclaimed christianity as a state religion in 301 that's why we are the first christian country and we did celebrate the 1700th uh, anniversary of Christianity in 2001 and all the Christian church leaders, they came to Armenia to celebrate with us, which means they uh, accept that fact that we are the first Christians. And my personal question, how the calendar of your like holidays differ from Russian Orthodox Church. Is it the same calendar or it's different? And of course, it's a different from Catholic Church, correct? Mm -hmm. So uh, there is a Julian calendar and Gregorian calendar. We follow the Gregorian calendar. It's like the uh, Russian Orthodox Church do the same. They do, I think, Julian. Ah, they do Julian. Yeah, so, yeah. so your Christmas is December twenty fifth. No, our no. Christmas uh, is January sixth. So, is Russian Orthodox Church the same? There are, uh, I mean, differences. Uh, I don't want to get into the details, details about yeah. the feast days and everything, but we follow the Gregorian calendar. Okay, so, yes. but holidays differ a little bit from... Yes. Okay, yes. Uh -huh. Okay, uh -huh. got it. We always welcome uh, new people, uh, if not every Sunday, at least uh, every month we see new people and we always welcome, I personally welcome them or I tell our people they have to go and welcome them to feel, uh, to make them feel at home and uh, we have new people who are coming from overseas and uh, we try to help them any way we can. We introduce them to other people so other people from our parish they can help them. So, uh, as I mentioned, my friend, she's Armenian, and she found an apartment to rent thanks of connection from church because you introduced her to people and she could find a yes, good, good place. Yes, I remember that day very well. Right? Yeah, yeah, and she, she, she's so happy now. And thank you yes. for, for all your help. Yes. We are happy to have them as a part of our parish family. Yeah, she she loves it, and just, she she invites me today. She said it was very yes. and I see like you are really friendly, and a lot of people here speaks also Russian. I see. Uh, yes, we have many people, uh, Russian speakers, of uh, course, Armenian speakers, and we have uh, third, fourth generation. They speak uh, mostly in English. English, yeah. Okay. So thank you. 
So uh, my name is Nick Turkanian. I am a third generation born Armenian American. And um, I am uh, a member of this parish for all of my 47 years. And my grandparents helped to start this parish oh. many, many years ago. Okay. Um, I have served in the parish council here for two six year terms. And I'm also on the board of directors for a, an Armenian youth organization as well. So yeah. Been that's... here for a long time. That's what I want to ask you about the youth organization. I see that a lot of kids involved in the church you have. I, I noticed you have soccer team or something. Yeah, so we have, um, there's different Armenian youth uh, organizations uh, that are kind of separated by politics, unfortunately. But we have a lot of people that actually go both in, in both organizations. And here the organization is called ACYOA, which is Armenian Church Youth Organization of America. And we have uh, biannual sports competitions where we play other parishes from other parts of uh, the Eastern United States. So Sports Weekend, it's called, is coming up in four weeks and it's in Philadelphia for the first time in about five or six years. So our kids are getting ready. That's why they're outside playing, practicing volleyball because that's one of the sports that they play. But I also saw a lot of awards you have, yeah? Yeah, I helped win a lot of those awards oh, <laughs> way oh. back when I when I had hair, yeah. <laughs> But I think it's a nice thing you do because uh, all next generation still stay, uh, stays involved in their Armenian heritage and keep uh, connection to their roots. Yes. It's, a good, it's a very good thing. Yeah, it, ke it keeps everybody involved. And um, it's it's one of the great things about this church You know, if, if, if we just wanted to worship, there's lots of churches that are close closer to my house. But we come here because um, you get both sides. You have the, the religious aspect and you have the community aspect as well. Oh. And also I know that you have Sunday school. Mm -hmm. So it's like for any ages? Yeah, well, we have, there's like a preschool uh, that's up through, I think it's three to five. And then Sunday school goes up to, I believe, 15 or 16 now. Um, and I have three kids in the Sunday school right now. Yeah, you mentioned about a unique situation for Philadelphia Armenian churches. Can you say yeah. it again? Yeah, so uh, in Philadelphia, we have five Armenian churches. Um, and they are uh, sometimes could be viewed as separated because of different political leanings or different versions of Christianity, different flavors, because there's an Armenian Protestant church and an Armenian Catholic church. Um, and then there's three other churches that, again, are separated by politics in certain ways. But Philadelphia is very unique in the Armenian diaspora because the five churches support each other in Philadelphia. In certain other cities, you see that there is a lot of animosity between different parishes from different groups. And here in Philadelphia, we do all support each other, regardless of maybe some differences in politics. So that's it's one of the great things about Philly is that if you go to an event for one parish, you'll see from people from the other four churches there. So it's like Philadelphia Unite. Yes. Yeah. Well, I yeah. hope we're the model. Okay. Yeah. It's a it's a good example. Yeah. Hi, I'm Alex Yavrusa Cook. I am the parent youth advisor here at Holy Trinity Armenian Apostolic Church in Cheltenham. Um, in the last three years, I've uh, been actively getting our youth group back up and running. During COVID, there was a gap, and um, it was an experience that me and my peers and all the parents my age had as, a, as um, we were growing up in the Armenian church. So we focus on uh, kids from 13 to 18, and um, I've tried to empower them to run their own group, and we just advise them through various events, um, and um, of course, service to the church, so volunteering, We do fundraising, we support um, different um, initiatives throughout the world um, that their fundraising will help with. So, um, and uh, as... Sunday school, do you have a Sunday school? We have a Sunday school here. I also do teach here oh. for the last four years. Um, depending on the year and the number of kids, it's usually either fourth through fifth, fourth, fifth and sixth grade around that age group. So, um, and that's been in a great experience as well. I try to keep our kids engaged and uh, with each other and focus on fostering their relationship first and foremost and um, and of course learn about the Bible and being Christian and also um, my class I always try to pay particular attention of what differentiates the Armenian church 
and being an Armenian Christian from, let's say, the Catholic Church or whatever, and just so to help them feel confident in, in the Armenian identity and what makes us special. So, um, yeah, so welcome to Holy Trinity. Please come and join us. Come find me or the other parent advisor. Her name is Anita Torkomian, and uh, we'll be happy to welcome you. As you see, it's very nice. A welcoming people. I have pleasure. I had pleasure and joy talking to them. I also just met a new immigrants, like a fresh generation of Armenians. Uh, they came just two years ago. They came from Moscow. Yeah, we have uh, in Russia, in Belarus, in Ukraine, we have Armenians all over the world. That's why, especially post-Soviet Union countries, that's why a lot of Armenians, I think almost all Armenians who live like not in United, who, who wasn't born in United States, they probably all of them speak Russian language or at least understand that. But for you guys, we made it in English. And I was thinking also, who is the most famous Armenian in the United States? And I got like, wow, oh, that's it, of course. It's Kardashian family, guys. <laughs> I bet you know all of them. I mean, all of you know them, Kardashian family. And also the artists from System of the Down. Okay, so leave a comment below. Of course, hit the like button, subscribe, and leave your thoughts in the comment section below the video, and maybe I will film something for you. Today, I just remember that not far from here, we have Serbian Orthodox uh, Christian Church, Serbian Christian Church, and they have Serbian Fest. So probably I will go there to film something for you again, and maybe talk to people. But I don't know anyone from Serbia, and Serbian church, but you see, I'm not a shy person. <laughs> Thanks again for watching. Like, share, comment, subscribe. See you.